What's up guys, Dado here. Welcome back to the channel. Today's a little bit different because this video is about keeping yourself and your family healthy. I am building a DIY in-home filtration system. There have been some awful things happening to our atmosphere. Some believe it's smoke from the fires. Others believe that there are other chemicals and pollutants in the air. Regardless of what the problems are, the air quality sucks. And today we're gonna make a very simple air filtration unit that works phenomenal. I know because I already built one and I'm building the second one. So sit back, relax, enjoy this content. I woke up one day and I saw the news about the wildfires that are happening in Canada and they're traveling all across the states and uh, polluting the air and water and everything else along the way. I decided that my health and my family's health is more important than just sitting around and scrolling around on social media and saying, man, I hope that doesn't get worse. I built one of these units last night and I realized when I woke up this morning that I could breathe 100%. Um, I didn't have a scratchy throat like I typically do and I, I feel so much better and it's this is like an industrial air purifier for your home a lot of people have uh, commercial air purifiers and unless you have a commercial air scrubber it won't do the job as efficiently as something this size so let's get to it I'll show you exactly how to put this together it's fairly inexpensive compared to buying an off-the-shelf model that's a few hundred dollars and these filters are readily available at your local hardware store so yeah let's get to it what you're gonna need for the project a 20 inch box fan I purchased this at my local Lowe's it was only $25 off the shelf and it's very quiet it's three speed and I thought the black looked really nice contrasting the white filters I went with a 3M advanced allergen filter. Now this has a 1500 uh, microparticle filtration level. Um, it's, as you can tell, it filters a lot of different things on there, not just dust and pollen. I bought two, two packs. It's a 20 by 20 by one. The reason why I went with that size is because the 20 inch filter will fit perfectly around the perimeter of where the fan is. If you can source these filters out locally and get one that is two inches thick, do that because they are way better. And when you put this assembly together, it's a lot sturdier because you have two inches of thickness all the way around instead of one. This is all I could find locally. So this is what I went with. Also, you save a little bit of money if you buy a double pack. So I bought two of them because we're going to need four for this project. Next, you're gonna need some duct tape. I went with the black duct tape because it looks really contrasting with these colors and I'm very OCD with stuff. A uh, pair of scissors, these are overkill, but that's what I got. And um, a box cutter. Don't cut yourself, and I say that uh, with humor because I may have uh, slipped while I was cutting the cardboard last night. So yeah, safety first. All right, so first line of business, open up the box fan, plug it in, make sure all the speeds work and it doesn't wobble and shake. You won't believe how many people buy something that's brand new and don't test it. So we're gonna take this out, unbox it, plug it in, test all the speeds. Then I'm gonna unbox the filters and we're gonna start assembling our cube. All right, fans unboxed and plugged in. There's these little feet that swing out. We won't be using those anyways, but I wanted to test all the speeds. It looks like the fan doesn't shake at all. This is the loudest that it gets. It moves a lot of air. Second speed. And speed number one. It moves plenty of air, it's quiet, it doesn't bind up, there's no issues with it. So now we can start building our cube. I'm gonna unbox these filters and start taping them around. There's a couple things you need to know before assembling this. 3M color codes their filters based on the quality of the filter and what it um, filters out. So here we have the gray filter that just does the basic lint and household dust. Uh, orange does the microparticle reduction all the way up to pollen and pet dander. Then you have the two different uh, greens. One is just allergen and the other one is allergen and odor reduction. If you have like smokers in the house or smog, you see that? Um, and if you got any kind of odors that you notice in your home. And then you have advanced allergen. What does all these things, plus it filters out some bacteria and some viruses. And the reason I say some is because I really don't know how far this breaks it down, but I'm sure that it helps a ton inside your home. 
One of the things that you have to be careful about is which way the air is flowing and which way these arrows are pointing because you do not want that to point the other way. It can restrict airflow and actually cause more issues than it's gonna do any good. Um, and that's pretty much as simple as that. Now, changing your filter every three months, I don't think applies in this case because we're using four filters and we're not, um, you know, this is made for an HVAC inside of a home. So these filters, I assume, are not going to get as dirty as your one filter for the entire house or if you have two returns or whatever it is all right somewhere on your filter you will see some numbers like this uh, there is a rating on all of these filters and it's called a MERV and it stands for uh, minimum efficiency reporting value right this is a 12 rating which is really good it's really high you kind of want to stick around 12 or 13 for this project this is all I could find locally Essentially, the MERV rating is to report a filter's capability to capture large particles, basically between like a 0.3 and 10 microns, right? The smaller the value, the less it can filter. The higher the value, the more it can filter. The other numbers are just airflow rate in CFMs and the max uh, rated airflow and also the initial resistance. Just remember, the dirtier the filter, the more resistance it has, okay? The less air moves through it. But also some filters um, you'll see that just look like a mesh screen, basically like the lower end filters that only filter large particles. Those filters will allow a lot of air movement and the finer that the pleats are and the filtering elements, the harder it is for the air to pass through. That's why it's very important to have a fan that can push enough CFMs to draw the air through and into your room. Now, if you wanna get crazy with this project, you can also get uh, two or four inch thick filters, which will help tremendously. And you can also get charcoal filters to add on to this. You can buy charcoal mats that you can pretty much put around the outside, and then it's adding a charcoal filter. Some of them are actually made with both the paper filter element and charcoal added to them. So you can get creative if you have any input on how you did the project or how I should have done something differently, go ahead and post it in the comments below. Next is assembling these filters. You want the arrows to point inside of your cube. So when you assemble this cube, every single one of these arrows is gonna point in and not out, okay? There's some down here as well. And also you wanna make sure that these pleats run vertical and not horizontal. Now you might be asking why? The arrows point in the direction that the filter is designed to work the most efficiently in, and the pleats, I have no idea because science. If one of you guys is a specialist in HVAC and understand why horizontal versus vertical orientation on pleated filters really matters, drop a comment down below. Also remember, as you're taping this, you're going to be taping over the edges that have the arrows on them. Don't tape over it and then be like, oh man, I wonder which way the arrows are supposed to point. So one thing you can do is um, make a mark right here on the inside where the tape won't touch somewhere. You put a dot that shows that it's the inside of the filter or however you guys wanna mark it. I'm gonna start taping these and the best way to do it is to lay a filter down, take a piece of tape, stick it halfway onto that filter and then put the next filter on top of it and then tape your seams, okay? I'm gonna tape the outside and the inside seam. The reason why I'm taping the inside is because this is only a one inch thick filter. If you're using a two inch filter, the frame is a lot more rigid. Now one thing you'll notice as I'm building this box, I'm keeping track of the arrows 
and also making sure that the pleated things all face the same. This is just sitting back here. I don't have it up at the top yet. I didn't want to show you one thing. If you stack, let's say this is your one side. If you stack this filter on top and this filter on top, what's going to happen is you're going to have a longer end and a shorter end, right? So when this is down like this, you want to put one filter on this side and one filter on top. That way when you stack the other uh, filter here, that'll go just like this, uh, just like that, and that'll sit inside there, and then it'll line up perfectly on this edge over here, okay? That way it makes a, a uh, square top and not a rectangle top, because we have a square fan and not a rectangle fan. Now that we have our filter box built, we're going to need a bottom to this, because you don't want to put a filter here and then it sits on the ground and the filter does nothing. So the best way to make a uh, filter box bottom is to use the fan box. Now, I was going to cut this box here and show you, but last night when I built another unit, I just cut it out of the box from the fan. Take this over here. I'm just going to sit it right next to the box to show you. So if this side here is lined up, like that. You have a little bit of a lip overhang there. You can take a Sharpie and mark that. And then also on the other side, there's a little bit of uh, room right here. So I'll Sharpie this and I'll cut it with a utility knife, being very careful. And then uh, we'll tape that onto the bottom. All right, there you have it. The fan is on. Note the direction of the airflow is up, right? So in this setup, what happens is this fan will actually draw the air through these filters on each side, okay? And then push the air up. One thing I forgot to mention is when you're purchasing a fan, if you don't buy this brand or this design fan, make sure that the controls are either on top of the fan or up front because if they're behind the fan there's no way for you to reach in and change the speed i've been keeping my garage doors and windows and stuff closed out here in the shop primarily because the air quality sucks but you also have to remember this shop gets a lot of work done in it so i weld grind um you know cut wood do all kinds of stuff in here thank you for watching this video drop me any comments uh, complaints suggestions if you are a specialist with hvac or filters or if you're a scientist and want to drop down your knowledge please do i'm not a professional by any means but i do a lot of cool stuff thanks again for watching guys see you in the next one also if you'd like to support you can do that by subscribing liking and sharing my content and also visiting my e-commerce store uh, www.dotomadeshop.com uh, you can go on there and find a lot of cool whiskey and cigar stuff signs uh, insulated tumblers i can customize whatever you'd like and uh, it would mean a lot to me if you guys at least went and checked it out thank you so much hope you enjoy the video i'll make some more hopefully soon i'm trying to ramp up my content on here because i get a lot of positive feedback people are like you just need to film you just need to post i'm doing it